Hey folks, this is Michael Halpin with Munireg, coming to you with our next installment of our video blog series discussing vacant and abandoned properties, um, code enforcement, zombie foreclosures, etc., etc. So, uh, to jump right in, I want to discuss an article that came out uh, from Municipal World. Um, actually, has nothing to do with any of the topics I just mentioned, um, but um, the headline definitely caught my eye and um, definitely gave me a lot to think about and. Hopefully, I will share some of those thoughts with you today and leave you with some food for thought for your community. So, um, the headline was Getting Ahead of Bad Press. Um, so, folks that know me and know Munireg and follow our postings know that one of the big themes that we promote and advocate for um, is being proactive as opposed to being reactive. So, when you see a headline that says Getting Ahead of Bad Press, um, definitely screams proactivity. So, definitely caught my eye. Um, so what I'm going to do is share with you some of the uh, snippets from the article. Um, if anybody wants a copy of the full article or any of the other articles I, I mentioned today, please feel free to shoot me an email at mhalpern, H-A-L-P-E-R-N. So that's mhalpern at munireg.com. And I'll gladly share it with you. Um, so what I'll do is I'll share some of the snippets and then uh, hopefully um, bring it over to the vacant, and pro uh, vacant property world that we live in and, um, and demonstrate some of the parallels. Um, so... The issue was about the LA County lifeguard program that seems got a lot of negative press recently. So um, after describing some of the heroic actions that they do, it says, but recent LA area national, head national headlines paint a very different message, one of taxpayers being ripped off. Um, jumping ahead, it says in some stories, the county's perspective wasn't included at all. In other stories, it was included after the ripoff narrative. Jumping ahead again, this was true even in local media, which means the county had not effectively engaged media outlets that most influenced their target audiences. The region's taxpayers, politicians, and community leaders. So um, those are just some of the quotes, but overall what the article was really talking about is look what happens when you're not being proactive, you let somebody else control the narrative, um, your, your perspective, your messaging that you want out, um, if it gets out at all, is buried all the way at the bottom of the article, um, definitely doesn't have the prominence that the other side has. Um, so it talks about some of the short-term and long-term consequences, negative consequences, um, and then advocates for building what they call a trust reservoir, um, which obviously involves being proactive, getting the messaging out. I like how they talk about other um, industries as well. So it's not just uh, for the for applicable to the, to the lifeguards, they talk about banks, they talk about um, government contractors, public agencies, uh, hospitals and nursing homes, etc. So the article concludes with this statement, your side of the story may be the right one, but nobody's going to believe you if the trust reservoir isn't full and constantly refilled. So that that's the that's the conclusion of the article. And, you know, definitely got me thinking about two specific thoughts. Um, one we've touched on in the past and the other one not so much. So the first one, um, you know, just make a couple of points about um, controlling the narr controlling the narrative and, and, and getting your message out. Um, in general, you know, we, in the past we've talked about um, and we've put out a study from the New York State Legislature that talks about um, code enforcement not being um, understood, funded, um, you know, I, I guess valued. Uh, maybe I'm putting some words into in, in, into the report, but. Basically, um, that um, you know, a lot of education is needed when it comes to code enforcement. Um, so it's really critical to be proactive, get the message out, build this trust reservoir. Um, we saw, and, and it's not that hard. Uh, there was an there was a article that came out recently. We we, we disseminated where a code officer in Minnesota took a reporter on a ride along with him and uh, went through the daily uh, the daily routine showed him uh, showed excuse me showed the reporter um, the procedures they have to follow discuss the municipal code that they have to follow um, some of the challenges um, in summary the article really shined a positive light on the code officer really shined a positive light on the community um, and I think it's really um, a good example of what this article in municipal world is advocating for in building a trust reservoir um, second, I think um, having um, this uh, greater understanding will make things a lot easier. We just saw in uh, Dallas, Texas, where a significant budget request was made for protective gear for code enforcement officers. Um, and you know, just reading the article, I think they did a, a tremendous job of educating not only the decision makers, but also the constituents in the community about the need for this protective gear, bulletproof vests, et cetera. Um, 
you know, we've spoken a lot about um, on educating folks on, uh, on the value code enforcement brings to a community, but there's another aspect of the actual day-to-day -day dangers that code officers face just by doing their jobs. So I think by, um, by their being proactive in Dallas uh, with the education and the messaging, um, they were able to get um, this critical need filled. So that's another example. Um, the, another one is where we see, um, you know, when you deal with eyesores and vacant abandoned properties and the media gets a hold of it, um, you know, so there's always that need to have that trust reservoir. But, you know, we've seen situations where, um, you know, it, the, the messaging um, wasn't put out. So in a, in a situation where you've got a neighbor complaining to the media about an eyesore, is that really the time to go into the nuances of the, of the challenges, uh, the real challenges that code enforcement has, or, or is the time to do that earlier? Um, you know, you, you've got a, a neighbor living to a really um, rundown property. Um, that's that's really the focus of uh, focus of the art of the of the report. So it's really hard at that point uh, on a specific case to get your messaging out. So that's the the value for it. You know, we had one where um, in South Carolina where the, the neighbor complained to the media, and um, the municipal spokesperson said, uh, "Well, there's a bank involved. It's going to take four months to um, you know to get uh, to get a hold of the bank, to identify the bank, to speak to them." The next day, Munireg was able to get them the the, the contact um, with the bank, the identity of the bank, the individual uh, at the bank that is concerned about these uh, the maintenance issues of the property. Um, there's ways of being proactive, um, be creative, be proactive. Um, that's one of the things that we can help with, not just with the practical identification, but helping with the messaging, helping to, to avoid this negative press. That, was a, that headline was just a really bad headline uh, where you got a neighbor dealing with a vacant abandoned property and the, the, the community is saying, well, it's going to take months for us to take care of it. That's not what anybody wants to hear, and it's not what the community wants uh, to be published either. So... Um, a lot of value in that, and, and which ties into the the last point um, in regards to controlling the narrative is you know being open and transparent with the challenges. It's a real challenge that code officers and and um, all uh, levels of municipal government have is balancing and walking that fine line between the property rights of the owner of this um, property, the, the 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 offending property, whether it's vacant and abandoned or it's uh, it's blighted um, but still occupied. And the neighbor and the rights of the neighbors. The neighbors have equal rights, and uh, it's and they have the right to live in a, a safe and a secure neighborhood. That often isn't the case when you have one of these um, offensive properties next door. Um, but um, but everybody's rights need to be equally protected. So it's definitely a challenge. Um, getting the message out there proactively can mitigate some of these um, potential downfalls that can happen after. Um, Talking about potential downfalls, downfalls, risk management. Um, so from this from this point, it's more of avoiding the bad press as opposed to getting ahead of the bad press. So just um, you know, speaking from Unireg, I know that when we um, you know work to partner with um, with third parties, so not our direct clients, which are municipal governments, but third parties. You know, we we try to take a um, a, a holistic view of who they are, um, and I think it's something that. Um, you know, definitely would recommend for, um, for municipal governments as well. When you hire somebody on, on a personal level, um, you know, you, you don't necessarily just look um, for, the, for their accomplishments. You look for their, their, their character, their ethics, etc. And, uh, you know, so that's something to think about as well. The more you do that, the more you're likely to avoid the bad press. So some of the things, you know, we're very proud of our diverse uh, staff that we have here. We're very proud of um, of the character. Anybody who speaks to them, meets them, um, their their character really shines through. Um, so that's that's really uh, something we're proud of. Um, when you you know, what are our business practices? Um, are they ethical? Um, the best way to do that is to is to is to speak to the people, um, not only our clients, which are the, the typical references, but also you know the companies out there that work with us um, that we, let me use the term, go after, which is the safeguard properties, the bronze, the large companies that work on behalf of banks and mortgage companies, the mortgage companies themselves, um, those are the largest property owners that have to register properties. Well, how do we interact with them? Um, are our business practices ethical? Um, 
is, is that something that we, it's not ethical and potentially could come back and hurt not only us, but hurt our clients as well. Um, so I'll wrap up by saying, you know, that on this particular point, um, you know, Michael, maybe you're going a little too far. Why care? You know, if um, if my third party um, is, is you know, I, I have my attorney draft a contract, um, they fulfill the components of the contract, um, you know, they're, they're doing a good job. Um, maybe I'm, it's the, the, the third party's making me some money. Um, you know, who cares about anything else? Well, you know, again, when you read an article like this, and you know, you can, whether it's getting ahead of the bad press, avoiding the bad press, um, you know, the more due diligence you do, um, I speak for myself, the more due diligence we do as well, the less likely um, we're gonna hit a pitfall of having um, the negative press uh, or the bad press that we all try, want to avoid. So thank you very much for listening and uh, feedback is always welcome.